So we've talked a little bit about this before where if you have too much of a reactant, it's considered to be in excess. We have more than enough. This does not mean it's not important. It just means that we have more than enough to complete the reaction. We're going to have leftovers, okay? The opposite end of that is if we have a reactant that runs out before the other, we call that reactant the limiting reactant. It's going to limit what we can do in this, uh, this reaction. It doesn't matter how much I have of the second one. If I'm limited by the first one, I can only do so much with the reaction. A little confusing at first, so why don't we break this down into something that I think everybody could understand. We're going to talk about some s'mores. Okay, now I think everybody's pretty familiar with the basic concept of a s'more, but the, the primary ingredients are chocolate bars, marshmallows, and graham crackers. And so we're going to take a moment and write this as a reaction. Uh, you know, we'll abbreviate ch crackers and chocolate and all that. Um, it takes four crackers, six bars of chocolate, one large marshmallow to make one s'more. So if we were to write that as an equation, it's going to look like this. Okay? So now if we were going to do some very basic equations, or not equations, but if some very basic problems with this, they might look like this. If I have 12 crackers, 18 bars, and 3 marshmallows, how many s'mores can you make? Well, any of those numbers that you choose, if I take, choose the chocolate, I need 6 bars of chocolate. Well, 18 divided by 6, I'm going to be able to make 3 s'mores. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple example. Okay. If I look at the next one, now we bring back that term excess. If I have eight crackers and an excess of chocolate marshmallows, in other words, I have more than enough, which is a wonderful situation to be in if you ever find yourself there. If I have eight crackers, well, it takes four per s'mores, so that means I'm going to be able to make two s'mores. Now, the next question, I want you to really pay attention here. If I have 24 bars of chocolate and 10 marshmallows and an excess of crackers, how many s'mores can I make? Well, those 10 marshmallows means I can make 10 s'mores, right? Not quite here, because even though I have enough marshmallows for 10 s'mores, I only have enough chocolate bars for four. So in this case, even, you know, it says I have an excess of crackers, well, I also have an excess of marshmallows. The chocolate is my limiting reactant. So if I want to continue on, shift back to chemistry now, here is the basic equation for water, okay? Um, I'm going to treat this like my s'mores recipe. I have two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen makes two parts water. And of course, instead of saying parts, we'll say moles. And so if I were to look at this uh, question right here, you know, if you take a look at this, I have 12 hydrogen, 12 oxygen. Which one is the limiting reactant? Okay, well, we have to think on this. We're going to think for just a little bit. For every two hydrogen, I need one oxygen. Well, if I've got 12 hydrogen, that means I need six oxygen. Okay? So if I use up every bit of that hydrogen, I only need six oxygen. So that means that I'm going to have leftover oxygen. So that means the hydrogen is my limiting, and my oxygen is my excess. I'm going to have six moles of oxygen left over. Okay? So that's one we can just kind of talk our way through. We can use the equation. You know, it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Now, I know what you're thinking. That one was an easy one. What if we got weird decimals? What if we got grams? What if we got this? How do you calculate the limiting reactant? Well, here it is. Okay? You pick one of the reactants. It does not matter which one you pick. Whatever one we pick, we're going to call it A. All right, you're going to use A to calculate how much B you need, how much of the other reactant. Okay, again, it doesn't matter which one you pick. Here's the part you have to think on if you don't have enough B, then B is the limiting reactant. So, if you if the problem gives you 5B and you need 7B, well, you don't have enough, so B is the limiting reactant. Otherwise, a is the limiting reactant. So if we want to take a look at an example problem here, we're going to, I'm going to make this make sense for you, okay? 7.9 moles of hydrogen, 6.1 moles of oxygen. Which one is the limiting, okay? Got weird decimals now. It's not as straightforward. All right, what do we do? You pick one. 
It doesn't matter which one you choose. And in this case, I'm going to do both so I can show you. So we're going to get started with 7.9 moles of hydrogen. We do our mole to mole ratio. Moles of hydrogen goes to the bottom, oxygen on top. All right. And I calculate, hey, I need 3.595 moles of oxygen. 3.95 moles of oxygen. I calculated that I needed 3.95 moles of oxygen. If I look back in the problem, it says I have 6.1. That means I have more than enough oxygen. Oxygen is in excess. That means hydrogen is the limiting reactant. Okay, so I said I was going to do both. Let's start over now. Let's say I pick the oxygen first. All right, well, I'm going to convert it the same way. Moles of oxygen going to go down to the bottom. Same ratio. It just looks different because we started with something different. This time I calculate I need 12.2 moles of hydrogen. But wait a minute. The problem doesn't give me 12.2. It only gives me 7.9. I don't have enough hydrogen to use up all of that oxygen. That means hydrogen is going to limit me. I'm going to run out of hydrogen before I run out of oxygen. So same thing that we just said. Hydrogen is the limiting Oxygen is in excess. So let's take a look at a more difficult example. All right. Remember, pause the video here if you want to try these on your own. If not, here we go. So the first problem starts me out with 14.5 moles of ammonia, 20 moles of oxygen. Which one is going to limit you? All right. I'm just going to pick. I'm not going to do it both ways. I only need to do it one way, so I'm just going to pick. I'm going to pick the ammonia just an arbitrary decision. You could have picked the oxygen. It doesn't matter. So I start with the ammonia. I'm going to convert it to the oxygen. All right. So going from ammonia to oxygen, there's my mole to mole ratio. And I calculate I need 18.125 moles of oxygen. Well, in the problem, I have 20. So I have more than enough. Oxygen, therefore, is in excess. Ammonia is the limiting reactant. Done and done. The next problem, a little bit more difficult because ah, oh, they gave it to us in grams and they gave both numbers in grams. So it's just like our other problems, we're going to have to go from grams to grams. It's going to be a four-step problem. Not an issue, though. We've done it before, so let's get going. Okay, 25 grams of NH3. Again, I just picked it. That's all. I'm going to convert this just like we did before. Grams goes to the bottom, moles on top. That's 17.031. I hope you remember where to get that. Go to the periodic table. One nitrogen, three hydrogen. And keep going. Okay? Mole to mole ratio. Convert to grams of oxygen. 31.998. So 2 two times the oxygen. And I get, I need 58.7 grams of oxygen. Oh, wait a minute. The problem doesn't give me 58.7. It only gave me 35. So I don't have enough oxygen to react with that ammonia. I will run out of oxygen. Oxygen is my limiting reactant. So now this last one, ooh, this last one's a little more tricky. Okay, and the reaction given above, it gives me two reactants. It says, how much nitrogen monoxide can you make? This one's a little bit more tricky. Gives you two reactants. It says, hey, how much nitrogen monoxide can you make? One of those is going to limit me, but I'm not sure which one. So here's the trick on this. If you want to save yourself some work, I know it won't sound like you're going to save, but trust me, this is the quickest way I know. Calculate it for both. Calculate how much nitrogen monoxide you can make for each reactant. The one that makes you the least amount of nitrogen monoxide is the limiting reactant. I'm just going to run through that real fast. Same thing we've done before. Whoops, my animation got out of order. And so that one makes 17.2 grams. All right, we'll do the other one. So if I use the ammonia, I get 17.2. If I use the oxygen, I get 18.2. Oh, that means I can only make 17.2. Ammonia is the limiting reactant. Okay, last thing. I promise it'll go fast. We, we're calculating theoretical and actual yield. In all of these problems, they've all been theory. We haven't actually sat down in the lab, mixed the chemicals, measured it out, said, hey, this is how much we produced, okay? We're just sitting there calculating numbers, okay? Sometimes a reaction does not give you the correct amount. Sometimes it doesn't produce exactly what you think. And there's a number of reasons that we are not going to get into in this class. So don't worry about it, but just know we don't always get 
100% of what we think, all right? So if this happens, we're going to calculate the percent yield, all right? It's going to be a percentage. We're going to take what we think will happen, the theoretical, and then we're going to take what actually happened, the actual, and we're going to use those to calculate the percent using this formula right here. Actual divided by theoretical. Now you should always get less than or equal to 100%. You should never get more than 100% because that means you produced extra out of nowhere. And we know that can't happen. All right. So let's just take a look at a, a couple of quick problems. All right. So... Here's a standard calculation problem, 34.7 grams of phosphorus chloride with an excess of our other chemical. How many grams can we produce? All right, so we'll do the actual calculation. Put it over 1. Do the molar mass, mole to mole ratio, molar mass again, and that's what we get. All right, so straightforward problem. We expect to get 20.7 grams, but if we read the next problem, it says, oh... We actually only had 9.77 grams. What is the percent yield? Straightforward. I'm going to take the actual divided by what I calculated by theoretical, and I get 0.472, make that a percent, 47.2%. That's it. That's all there is to it. So how about you try a couple of them? All right. I want you to look at this problem. This problem has a lot of information in it. Don't let that throw you off. We read through it. Okay, cool. Slaked line. That's awesome. I always wanted to know that. Great. I get there. It says, in the above reaction, I react, the student reacts one kilogram of calcium hydroxide. Here we go. That's what I needed. And you say, huh, kilograms. We haven't worked with them. A kilogram is 1,000 grams. So let's actually, let's actually do it that way. 1,000 grams instead of saying a kilogram. How much water can be expected to produce? All right, run through the calculation. So we get 486 grams of water. Okay, that's how much we can expect to produce. Same calculation we've been doing over and over. Now, the next problem, we actually only got 423.9 grams. Oh, crap, what, what do we do? Um, notice it says with plenty of hydrochloric acid left unreacted. Fine. I don't care. That means we got leftovers. We knew that. We were going to have an excess. Don't let the wording throw you. What is the percent yield? Actual, what the problem told us we actually got, divided by the theory, what we thought we would get, and this one comes out to be 87.22%. Remember I gave you those practice worksheets. It's important for you to work through those and find any questions you might have so you can ask me. You guys have a great day.